Before we get into the video, I'm just going to go over a brief history of Iron Gall ink. Iron Gall ink was one of the most common inks used all the way from the 5th century to the 19th century, and it was still common up until the 20th century. It was so common because of how easily it could be manufactured and how cheap it was. It was so common, in fact, most of Leonardo da Vinci's drawings for his inventions were made in Iron Gall ink, and one of the oldest recorded Bibles, known as the Codex Alexandrus, which could be seen here, was written in Iron Gall ink. Another reason why this ink was so popular is it was permanent compared to other inks. The only way that you could erase it would be scratching the parchment. One problem, however, is this ink actually degrades the paper or parchment over time, burning holes in it. This is due to the acidity. So if you look at many old documents written in Iron Gall ink, you will see holes burned where the words used to be. Firstly, I will be grinding up acorns. Oak galls would work way better, but I'm geographically limited and they simply just don't exist where I live. But acorns contain a high level of tannins, so therefore they should work for the synthesis. Well, that didn't work. I'll uh, probably blend them. Ah, much better. Now for the extraction. So what we're going to do here is add up all the ground up acorns into a beaker, and we're going to top it off with methanol, and this should extract all the tannins. The tannins are water soluble and alcohol soluble, and soluble in most other polar solvents, so you could pretty much use anything. I'm just using methanol in this video. Ideally, before doing the methanol extraction, you should probably do a defatting process. This is to remove all the lipids from the organic material. How you do this is add a non-polar solvent into a beaker, similar to um, adding the methanol. You would let the um, lipids get extracted and carry you away with a solvent. Then you would filter it, keep the residue, and then you would do your methanol extraction on that. And that should leave you with just the tannins and no fats. I don't have a video of the filtration, but I just carried out a simple filtration and kept the filtrate. I'm sad to say that I lost most of my footage here on how I made the ferrous sulfate, but I will go over how I made it. So firstly, I added two grams of copper sulfate to a beaker. On top of this, I added 18 milliliters of water and mixed thoroughly until dissolved. Then I added one gram of iron filings to this beaker, and what this did was exchange the sulfate anion to the iron, which is already oxidized to the plus two state, forming iron two sulfate, and the copper from the copper sulfates liberated as a metal. Then we directly filter the solution into this graduated cylinder. As you can see here, it's starting to turn a bit yellowish, and this is indicative of the plus three oxidation state. Now for the really fun part, the color change. So what we're going to do here is add the ferrous sulfate solution into the tannin solution. What's happening here is the polyphenols are chelating the iron two ions, but since this is an unstable oxidation state, it readily oxidizes to iron 3, and it gives you this really nice coordination complex. The biggest problem with this ink is it consists of a bunch of large particles in suspension instead of something that's dissolved. So to keep it in suspension, you need to add a binding agent such as gum arabic. I'm also going to make a quill pen and hopefully write with the ink. What I'm going to do here is add boiling water to the beaker with the feather in it, so this is going to soften up the keratin to a point where we can actually carve it into the desired quill tip. So here we're going to make a perpendicular cut to the feather. Watch 
Probably should have let it soak a bit longer. It's kind of difficult to cut. We're gonna make a cut from about one inch on the quill down to the very bottom in a scooping motion. This will be the main reservoir where the ink is held. And this is what it should look like when you're finished. Now halfway from the top of the cut to the bottom of the quill, you're going to make another cut in a scooping motion, this time from each side, so the quill should almost come to a point. Here I messed up and took too much material off. In this case it came too much to a point, but I can fix that by cutting, up, cutting it off. And here's what the pen should look like. Then we're going to make a cut down the middle, and this is to drop the ink. And now we're going to make the cut. In this case, the blade was a bit too thick, so it didn't turn out the best. But I'm sure you all could do better. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.